Hey everyone, it's Ali Lindley here from One Number. We're Tableau Education and Consulting Experts. And today we're going to take a look at maps in Tableau. You know, we've never done a mapping video, so we thought we'd just start with the basics, kind of walk us through some of the options, talk about how Tableau thinks about maps, and then maybe in some future videos we can build some more complex maps. So we're going to use Sample Superstore for almost everything that we do today. So you're welcome to fire that up on your copy of Tableau and follow along with us uh, if that's useful for you. But I guess the best place to start is to just take a look at some of Tableau's mapping capabilities. Now, if you load up Superstore, you'll notice that we've got a few fields that have this globe icon next to it. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that each of those columns, country all the way down to postal code, has geographic information in them in the data source, right? If we click on the data source tab, go over to those fields. Here's country, city, state, province, and postal code and region. And those are just string fields, aren't they? Uh, they just contain the names of places. But Tableau is able to isolate those or look at those fields and go, okay, those are geographic fields. So what's actually going on is that each of those fields has what's called a geographic role. Now, there are a whole bunch of preloaded geographic roles in Tableau. And looking at this little drop down menu here, uh, we can see what some of those options are. So currently, country and region has a demographic role of, I mean, a geographic role of country and region. And so what's happening is Tableau is going, OK, this field refers to countries. Well, I've got a bunch of preloaded countries uh, and I can map those. And so all Tableau is doing is matching up the strings of the different countries with the countries preloaded in Tableau. So that's super cool. Uh, it's the same for city. We hit geographic role and we can see, OK, of all the cities in our data set, they're just strings. There's no latitude or longitude. Uh, but Tableau's got a whole bunch of kind of preloaded, pre-mapped cities for us that we can access just by matching up those strings, which is really, really powerful. So if you've got county level info or area codes or uh, zip and postal codes, airports, you know, whatever it might be, Tableau can map those. There is a limit to this. The, the list is not super extensive, meaning if you want something at a slightly um, more specific uh, level of detail to this, like street addresses or um, something like a state uh, school district, you're going to need to pull those in and we can work around those to get Tableau to map them, but that's not part of the default mapping in Tableau. So that's that's totally fine. But I think what would be good for us to do first is to build a filled map and filled maps are awesome in Tableau. Tableau can take any of these fields with a geographic role and map them. You've got two ways of doing that. One is to drag one of those fields, so I'll just drag state and province onto the detail tab and drop it in. And Tableau gives us a map like this. The other way is to just double click on it. Just double click on state and province and we've got the filled map straight away. So this is kind of Tableau's default view for geographic role dimensions. Okay, so what would we want to do in a filled map? A filled map basically just uh, in our case, because we're mapping states, it's going to color in each state based on a measure that we choose. So for instance, we could drop profit onto color like this, and now each state is colored uh, by the amount of profit that we have. Our little legend is up here, and that's quite cool to see. So that's really nice. You can swap those out, various measures, but that's the basics uh, of a filled map. I guess the one thing we could also do is to change uh, that from a state level to a city level or something. Um, but now the interesting thing is that Tableau is not filling in the, the state, right? Tableau is only kind of coloring each city as we go. So I guess it's worth knowing uh, what kind of level our map is working at, right, to try and get the filled map. So don't think that we can build a filled map at any level, particularly some of these lower levels, cities, uh, postal codes, things like that. Okay. Uh, what about building a different kind of map, a shape map? A shape map is similar to a filled map, but instead of coloring in like entire states, 
we use a shape to denote um, various measures. You know, instead of just coloring in the, the shape, we're going to, I mean, the, the state, we're going to color it with a shape. We'll see. Uh, let me put state on detail like this. I'm actually going to put city on detail too. So we're kind of lowering that level of detail to the city level. And now what we could do is put something like sales on size. Okay, so that's pretty cool to see. So the, the cities that we've sold the most in have the largest circles. We could zoom in a little bit up here. And if I go over to pan and kind of drag this around, we can see what this is looking like. So I think maybe the one thing that I do is make these circles a little bit bigger. So I'm going to click on the size tab and just increase the size of the circles like that. Uh, okay, we'll edit this in a little bit to make it look a little bit nicer. But the next thing that we could do is add a second measure. That's quite cool. Uh, let's drop some of profit onto color. So this is pretty interesting, right? Now we've got the size of the circles corresponding to the sum of sales, but the color corresponding to sum of profit. So, I mean, we could tweak these a little bit uh, to add in a border around each of these if we wanted to. Uh, we could drop the opacity a little bit uh, just so that we can really get an idea of what's behind what. Um, and that's one way of building a shape map. I think something else that could be interesting when you're building a shape map is uh, shape maps are really powerful when we use them in conjunction with a set. So just to, to kind of walk you through this super quickly, let's say we're trying to see our top five cities by sum of sales. So I'm just going to create a set on sales. And if you want to know some more about sets, why not check out this webinar that we built on them? The link will come up now. Um, or come and join our Mastering Tableau Calculations 2 workshop coming up in a little while. Uh, it's all about sets, parameters, and LODs. So if you want to go deeper in any of those sections, come and join us. And if you want to take any of your Tableau skills to the next level, come and check out our classes that we've got coming up over the next few months. We're super excited about them. We hope to see you there. But what I'm going to do is just create the city. Uh, let's think. Top five cities sales naming. It's my strength. Okay, let's go down to, let's just say top five cities by sum of sales. We've got a little set. And now I'm just going to pop this onto size but I'll, <laughs> I'll answer too big. So let's double click on that and reverse them. Okay, fine. Let's hit okay. I'm just going to put the set onto color again. I'm going to change my mark type to shape. And I'm going to put my set onto shape two. So pretty much anywhere that my set can go, I'm putting it in. And I'm just changing our actual shape types. So I think I'm going to choose these big, like, filled triangles for our ins and these hollow circles for the outs. And that gives us a map that looks something like this. Now, is it the prettiest way of presenting this info? No, <laughs> no, it's not. And we can tweak it a little bit uh, to see, you know, exactly how we want this to go. That's totally fine. But those are just two ideas of how to use a shape map to represent uh, your either two measures side by side, or why not highlight some values in a set or something like that. Pretty cool. In Tableau Maps, we also have uh, map layers and various options that come along with them. So I thought let's just take a look at these map layers and and work out what what they do. Tableau thinks about maps as these multiple maps kind of sitting on top of each other. Uh, and so every time we're clicking, we're, we're adding dimensions. Ooh, I use the dimensions word out of context. Every time we're adding multiple layers to our map, you know, we want to see state names. We want to see state borders. We want to see some coastline. We want to see, you know, whatever it might be. Tableau thinks of kind of stacking those, those map layers. And what we can do is kind of toggle these on and off. So these are called our background layers. So I just check coastline. You can see now the coastline is sort of highlighted. If I put in streets, highways, and motorways, what's happened? Well, nothing. <laughs> but if I zoom in, we'll begin to see them uh, as we get closer and closer. So now some streets, highways, and motorways have appeared. 
So that's super cool. So based on what we want to see, you know, we can kind of toggle these map layers on and off. I can also change my style. So I can get what's called a normal map here. We can get an outdoors map. That's like your Google Maps map, right? Or your Apple Maps map. It's not start a comment war. And then we've got a, a you know classic satellite map. So based on your use case and what you want Tableau to do, those are just some options that we have, which is pretty cool. But I think for our demo, I'm just gonna go back to normal because I like it the most. Um, what else do we have? I think what strikes me about this background map layers uh, menu is that there are a lot of options. There are a lot of things that Tableau uh, can map for you. I will say that the, the kind of, there are some US specific fields and that's okay, but all in all, it's really, really pretty comprehensive. Um, so I like that a lot. The one other thing that we haven't taken a look at is this map options. And I think this is helpful, especially when you're trying to set some limits on what you want your end users to be able to do. So if you don't want them to be able to pan around the map and zoom in some more, why not remove that, right? And so here we can just add in a map scale. Here it is down at the bottom right. You know, things like that um, to, to help curate that map experience to what we want, which is really nice. So play around with those and see if you can build the kind of map that you're looking for. Some questions that we get asked really often are, I've got a, you know, I've got a something that I want to map and it doesn't quite map into or it doesn't match up with what Tableau can map intuitively. What can I do? And there are a couple of options. While Tableau's default mapping is limited, uh, you can add in other aspects, things that you want to map by using spatial files. Um, and this is a more advanced mapping concept. So we'll have to do a, a video just on this. Let us know if you want that, because we'd be happy to do that. But I thought this is a nice example where we're looking at the various school districts in Washington state, which Tableau can't map intuitively. And we've got some highways. Uh, so this is an interesting view, just seeing, hey, what school districts get serviced the most? Um, but in order to build that, we don't have any, um, you, you know, these aren't just string fields in, our, in a column. These are actual spatial files that we've brought in and we can now map those, which is really cool. And that allows us to map some of those specialized things that we want to map, but might be quite particular to my context. There are also some other options with tools like Mapbox and things like that, which are really, really cool to take a look at, but definitely a little bit more advanced. And I guess the last thing, is uh, this hex bin map. Now, hex bin maps are very cool. They're slightly different to a density map. I don't know if you've seen that before, and they're definitely different to a filled map. A filled map is kind of asking like, hey, um, of, of this particular area, right, of state, uh, how much did we sell? Uh, well, what we're looking at in a hex bin map is how many things happened in this tiny little area of my little hexagon. Right, so, so that's probably the biggest difference. But the cool thing about the hexagons is it's kind of lumping all the events that happened within the hexagon into a single value and representing that as the value of the hexagon. So what we're looking at right now is just the number of housing units added in Seattle. So we can see the dark areas had the most housing units added and the really light ones had the, the least. Here's one with two and here's one with 10,000. So they're also super cool. Um, and, and a very, you know, nice mapping tool to add to your arsenal, but also a slightly more advanced concept. So we're going to wrap up uh, this video here. I hope that that basic intro has been helpful for you and you feel like some of your mapping questions have been answered. If you feel like actually some of the things that we want to talk about or that you want to learn were in uh, some of the more advanced portion of this video that we didn't quite get to, let us know in the comments. Uh, because I'd be more than happy to kind of walk us through some more advanced mapping options if that would be helpful. All right. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.